Greetings everyone, welcome back to a brand new tutorial. Today's sound is going to be this one. So let's get into it. So before we start the tutorial, I would like to thank you for choosing this video as the next one that you're going to be watching. And I would like to encourage you to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content. I make sound design tutorials every Monday and Thursday. So if you enjoy this type of stuff, make sure you get subscribed. So let's get into the patch. So this is a growl, right? And I'm gonna do a little two segment thing here. So first I'm gonna show the patch and do a patch overview and later on I'm gonna give some tips about the patch and how you can tweak it. So right now I'm just gonna give it this patch and overview. Timestamps are in the description in case you wanna go straight to the tips part or if you wanna see any specific part of this video. So let's get into the tutorial. So the, the patch starts with all of this, right? Essentially, we have a serum that's being distorted, it cues, then has a vocodex layer, some multiband compression, and then distortion. The, the patch itself it has a, a custom wavetable and an FM wavetable that I've made a while ago. Both uh, a sub bass, some noise, and all of these, except the sub, are being routed into the, the COM uh, H6+. Plus. Right, so using the first LFO, I'm pretty much just controlling the main movement of the patch, namely uh, levels. So I'm controlling the level of every single uh, oscillator uh, in Serum, as well as the band plus of oscillator B. With LFO2, I'm controlling the cutoff and resonance of the filter. I'm not doing anything special here, just some unison on these two and some bend plus on uh, the growl uh, wavetable. So on the effects section, I'm using a phaser with rate set to zero, depth to maximum, and, and I'm modulating the frequency of it with LFO5 with this rate and just pulling that a little bit backwards. Next up, I've got some hyper dimension where I'm modulating the mix. I'm using seven voices of unison and I'm giving a little bit of dimension to the sound with the size in the minim minimum and the mix at, you know, about 10 o'clock, somewhere around that. The mix is being automated with LFO4 and as well as the mix on the hyper, I'm also automating the low pass filter in the chorus. The, low, the chorus has the rate set to zero, the delay set to one millisecond and two milliseconds, the feed set cranked to 59% and the depth to 26 milliseconds. The mix is at 50%. Next up, I've got the, some distortions, so self-clip distortion. The filter is disengaged and uh, this next tab is the EQ, where I'm automating with LFO3 the cutoff frequency of the high pass and the cutoff frequency of the low pass. Next up, I've got some, some multiband compression. And if we go to the matrix, right, I've talked about every single LFO but the 6th and the 7th. So the 6 is essentially controlling the wavetable position of oscillator A and the 7th is controlling the main volume of the whole patch and is being controlled by the pitch bend wheel uh, in order to achieve this vibrato type thing. When I pitch it bend with the pitch bend. Uh, when I pitch it up with the pitch bend. Right, so for the patcher now, um, let's check how the sound is going. So I've got a wave shaper here. It's just giving it some more strength. Um, I've got some EQing. It's a bit all over the place, but I'll explain this in the tip section. Then some vocal decks. Uh, Right, and both of these, the dry signal and the vocal jacks, are being distorted. 
then some OTC. And finally some distortion. I'm not doing anything else as you can see. Uh, so yeah, that's the patch and let's hop on the tip section of this tutorial. So starting up with the, the mess that is this serum patch, right? So I'm just gonna mute everything and just leave serum by itself. So about these two wavetables, right? I, I think I should start by by explaining these. So as you can see here in the corners, right, we have a little bit of a fuzziness going on. And that's because if we import the harmonics, right, you see that I have a lot of noise here, right? All of this frequ high frequency content. It's made to give this patch uh, an extra bit of texture. So if I turn everything off, right, and you can even see there, we have a lot of high frequency content, right? Same thing applies to the second waveform. The only difference here is that I've used some more of the square series harmonics to make this shape, but the high frequency content remains. And if you're wondering, the way you do this you, is you go to the additives part, you press control, and then you click and drag the level that you want. So it's really simple. And you can give, can give the sound a little bit of texture. So the, the unison is also to expand the sound a little bit. And this is rather important. So then I had added this growl wavetable, which is just to add a little bit of texture, some sub bass, some noise, and then the filter to mess with the high frequencies. So that's kind of the job of the filter itself, right? So then I have a phaser create some notches and some resonances. The high part gives some dimension and some detuning. The chorus to reinforce the detuning and give it some more movement. And then the distortion to bring everything together. The high pass and the low pass to give the, you know, the, the sound, this growliness and also some movement. And then the multiband compression to bring everything up. So tips right away, use high frequency content and comb filters, flangers, uh, anything that can mess the high end, the high end a lot um, in order to create these, these weird textures. You can definitely tell that the high end is really, really crunchy. So that's because I used white noise and this combination of uh, high frequency content on my wavetable. Uh, to create this texture. Something that you can, you can also use to mess around with this patch is use the sub oscillator. For example, if, if I use a square wave instead of a sine wave and take out the direct out, that's how it sounds. So the, using the sub uh, is also a really strong tool. You can kind of dose it. Right. It's a very cool technique to, you know, give your sound a little bit more punch and grittiness. So that's definitely something that you can use. Also, I would heavily advise playing around with the, the position of the effects. Uh, you can tweak these a lot and get a lot of different stuff. So play around with it and you can definitely get some pretty cool results. Uh, also, I would advise playing around with the phaser frequency and also with the, the hyper. Those can cha drastically change your sound. Also playing with the resonance of the high pass and playing around with the low pass can give you some interesting results. The distortion on this one isn't uh, particularly, you know, expandable because if you go too hard on it, you're just going to wreck the sound. But maybe with some other t settings uh, tweaked, you can get some happy accidents. So, I don't know, play around with it as well. It's probably a good idea in order to achieve different sounds. So then I have some distortion 
which is just some saturation it's nothing special and then talking a little bit about the eq so i needed to clean up the sound a little bit i had a lot of low frequency rumble so i high passed it uh, at around 64 hertz and i boosted the low end just so i can get a little bit of the sub uh, and some more movement there also i've cut around uh, 500 hertz because it was a bit muddy and also i wanted to emphasize the 1k region um and also i took a little bit down on the 4k region because since this is one of the most sensitive areas in our human hearing i wanted to make it less harsh so i kind of took it down a little bit because the sound was a bit too harsh in my opinion so after after this this is how it sounds <laughs> This is how it sounds initially. So it sounds a lot softer, a bit rounder, and overall just, you know, more pleasurable. So then I have some Vocodex that is doing a little bit of nothing, right? So it's not doing anything. It's just a little layer thing that I've done. So it's, it basically sounds like this. It's literally just the sound. I just tweaked a few knobs to get a, a little bit of a different sound going and merge it with the original sound and distort it over it. So basically this is how it sounds. So that's pretty much it. It's just a little bit of saturation in order to limit the volume of the sound. And then some OTT. limit the sound a little bit and just you know give an ott to it because why the fuck not and then some more saturation to clean up the sound and that's pretty much it these were the tips and i guess one thing that you can definitely take away from this eq is make sure you choose well which parts of your sound to really clean up and emphasize that's really important to set out the uh, to give the sound the the character and you know the timbres that it needs to really stand out. Also, play around with the white noise and comb filters in the high frequencies. So I didn't pick a, a, a comb filter, full comb filter, because I had no interest in fucking up my low, lower frequency. So I kind of just high passed it. Uh, that's because that's why this type of filter exists and. Also, you don't have to use as many filters as I used here, but that's kind of just a thing that I... Also, my idea with the pitch band and using it as a way to control the volume of the overall patch was because I thought this sound would be sound cool, would sound cool if, I, if it behaved like a Reese. So... So you can kind of get the idea there, uh, it kind of works, but it kind of doesn't. Uh, it's just a, a cool little detail because I think it sounds cool. Uh, I could definitely work on this a little bit more to make it sound perfect, but it's for the demonstration purposes, I think it, this is fine. Um, so it's just a little idea that I had to put on the pitch band. And yeah, that's it. That's the, the sound itself. It's a pretty cool, simple growl. And yeah, let's go on to the final words. So if you like the like enjoy the tutorial, make sure you give a like and if you enjoy the content on the channel, make sure you subscribe. Two days ago I posted another video, so make sure you go check that one out as well. It's a cool neural base layer technique that I sometimes use uh, and that I, I think it's not very common. So make sure you check that one out, it might be useful for you. So, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.